Morning, you guys. I came in early today to meet up with Out West with Chris. He's got his Hobie out back, and we don't have a lot of Hobie content on the channel, so I wanted to do a walkthrough on his Hobie Outback 2019. Yep. Just picked it up from Headwaters Adventure in Reading, and uh, we're going to be swapping out his fish finder mount and just kind of walking through his boat and the install that he just did. So let's Sweet. go. Let's go check it out. Awesome. So here's the beast. We're going to get it all set up for you guys and show you how he fishes off it. All right, so here's Chris with his Outback, and um, yeah, man, I just want to hear a little bit about your boat itself, why you made the switch to Hobie. I know you've been a feel-free guy and a uh, paddle guy, you know, what, uh, why'd you make the switch? Well, can I just clarify that, like, I, I'm not that tribalistic with my kayaks, like, I'm not a Hobie guy, uh -huh. and I'm not a pedal guy. I actually still have um, a couple paddle kayaks in my garage and I still plan on using them. I think, I'm a big believer in that there's no perfect kayak for every situation. Um, I think that paddle kayaks have their place. Um, I think that the Feel Free Lure is one of the best paddle kayaks around. Um, and for rivers, um, for getting up into the muck on the delta and punching and a platform where I can stand and just get up in the weeds, that's gonna be my go-to for lakes and hopefully in the future the ocean um that's where this guy comes in so i see you've got it all rigged up in fact i just watched your install video on the lawrence which i thought was fantastic i'm actually going to link it up at the end of this video for you guys um but one thing i noticed was the the ram ball yeah you got the one inch there and that's what size unit are you running there it's a that's seven? seven yeah so i was mentioning to chris that i thought that uh, he should go with something a little sturdier so he came by today on his way to Fish Maloney's and we're going to be hooking up this right here. This is the Yak Attack Lowrance Fish Finder Mount with the lock and load base. So let's switch that out real quick. So both these things mount the same way. The screw ball just attaches to the, uh, the built-in track on the Hobie. And then the ram ball there just plugs into the back of the Fish Finder. So you can just pop that out by, oh, you, oh just like that. Okay. I was just showing Chris. You can actually lift up that whole tab. It's a little easier, you know? Jeez. See, I had no idea. I've done a couple of Lawrence Fish Finder installs in my day, I guess. And you flip that closed and it's uh, it's on there. And now you got two adjustment knobs, so you can loosen up these and then you can, uh, you know, just get a little loose and you can adjust angle up and down, you can adjust the face. And then this little guy allows you to pick it up and spin it without it wanting to pop off. So once it's on there, it's locked in. Yeah, I like that. That'll be a lot more stout for you. And part of it, you know, sitting in it and being on the water, you get the best feel for how it should be, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you'll fish off it today, right? Are you going to have a video coming out from today? Yeah. Cool. So if you guys want, go follow Chris's channel. And uh, he does on-water uh, fishing videos, review videos, as well as a bunch of really good unboxing videos and just outdoor stuff in general. All right. So now that we got that done, just give me a walkthrough of your Outback and how you have it set up and why you do certain things. Okay, so um, we'll just start right up here, I guess. Um, inside here is where I mounted the battery, and I went with this uh, lithium ion um, 10 amp hour Nakwa. Look how tiny that thing is. I know, super small, and I can just have it Velcro around the sail mast. I don't need anything else down there. And how long would that run your seven inch uh, color fish finder? Yeah, I was out a couple days ago on Maloney's uh, for, eight hours and it ran it. I didn't adjust um, the light or dim anything, so it, it ran it pretty well. And then uh, here, you know, you got the the drive. Everybody knows the Mirage drive. This is the one with the forward and the reverse. So kind of got your transmission here. You just yeah. pull it to go forward, pull it to go backwards. Yep. And then the push pins adjust it, which yep. that's adjust a much your... cleaner system than what they used to have. Yeah, it's pretty easy. It's simple. I mean, they pop in and out super, super simple too, you know. So it's, it's just really easy. Um, here's your rudder. Um, so this releases your rudder down into the down position. And this Yak has an understern rudder that they went to, which I really like. Some people don't like the understern rudder, but I feel like it adds a lot of maneuverability and dexterity to this boat. So I'm right. a big fan. The nice thing too is it's, it's a retractable rudder. So if you hit something, it's just gonna go right back into place. Um, the only thing I don't like 
is that it stores like this and it's not all the way up into the body. You see what I'm saying, Dan? Yeah, yeah. So when you load and unload, you're dealing with yeah, that. Yeah, you got to. So I always load back end first. So when I bring it out, I bring it out on the bow. Um, yeah. So I don't have to worry about dropping that. You know what we should do then? We should throw a little bit of keel guard on your front end. I was going to want to talk to you about that. Okay, actually. cool. I'll, we'll do that before we're done here. We'll throw okay, a strip cool. on there. Uh, awesome, so awesome. Protect it. And then on the other side, right here, um, you've got the. Um, the drop down or the port, it's the thing that lets the guardian transducer shield drop down so that your side scan can work. Okay, I need to see this thing because I hear people talking about it. Go ahead and flip that for me. I saw your video and I, oh wow. Okay, now I wanna check this. So drop it down. If you're running and you hit something, yeah, that thing's spring loaded. So it just pops up out of your way. Yeah, that's, theoretically, that's what should happen. That's brilliant. And it mounts in there really clean. Did you have to do anything custom or is this just how it came? Uh -huh. I had to swap that out. Uh, this comes with your Hobie, that piece. Oh, okay. So it's a flat piece when you first get it. There's There was a whole lot of stuff I actually had to do here. This was a little bit of a, a hang up on uh, my install, um, figuring out where I needed to tie certain knots. I mean, it was just kind of a, a little bit of a wreck. Uh, the template for this was a little bit of an issue. Um, it's all stuff that I worked through though. All right, well, I'm gonna link that up, you guys, so you can go get the detailed walkthrough of his install. Uh, like I said, he did a great job, and some of the things that might hang you up will be answered in that video, so. Hey, look up right here really quick. You see this, this little insert? Yeah, in I noticed hole? that. They reinforce all their scuppers. Yeah. So if you're gonna run a cart, Hobies are really meant for scupper carts. We don't recommend scupper carts for a lot of kayaks, but look, they reinforce every scupper. And push pulls, too. If yeah. you wanna yeah. anchor off with a push pull, a lot easier and more peace of mind doing it when you have it reinforced. For sure. What else we got going on in the cockpit here? Okay, so from there, you know, you got some of these forward rod holders. I, I really don't use them. Um, I think if you were gonna soak bait, they might be interesting to use. Um, one of my favorite parts of the boat in general are these, is this area. And I forget what they call it, but they have a fancy name for, for this. And this is all redone with the 2019 Hobies and it incorporates some rail and then some H rail with some gear track in it as well. And I think it's awesome. So if you have H rail um, stuff, you can mount it to that. Right. But or, if you have track mount, it still works just the same. Yeah, so if you're like me and you're coming from uh, a feel free or a bona fide or something like that, your gear can work. You don't have to get anything fancy to make it compatible. And I like this little guy right here. I mean, you don't have anything in there necessarily, but like if you wanted to have a tackle box that you were running throughout the day, cool. So the idea is here, you throw your tackle box in there and then you have this guy that goes right over the top and secures it in. And especially if you're ocean fishing, that's huge. Right. Oh, look at that little plier spot. Bait knife spot right there too. Oh, okay. And they're all on these built-in um, retractors. Wow. So. A lot of thought really went into the, the layout of this thing. I was telling somebody the other day, like, I feel like this is going to be the standard that the rest of the industry is going to go off. Yeah, of. I think so too. Really um, nice. Tons of mounting options, you know? And so if you record, you know, you can get, you know, your GoPro, your face view, you know what I mean? Mounted mm -hmm. right up here. Um, you know, I've got more stuff on retractors over here. Some of these Gerber braid scissors or shears or whatever. So, and you got uh, you got over here you got your fish grips yep on a lanyard um, and then let's talk about this is this something that you added on no this came um, that way and and you'll see what it looks like over here it's on both sides so that you can mount your fish finder head unit on either side whatever side you're more comfortable I like that and you can steer from either side too so if you have your fish finder on your left you can or on your right you can steer from your left or vice versa yeah whatever you're comfortable with and that's basically, this is a three-way plug. So this allows electronics um, from inside your hole to out um, into your, your cockpit area with uh, the least amount of drilling that you're gonna have to do. Mm -hmm. um, so you just use these three-way plugs and they, they work pretty good. They were a little bit of a, a struggle for me to get up to mount on this one. Um, the one under the seat worked perfectly though. And the thing I like about them is it's a, I mean, nothing's waterproof on a kayak, but way more water resistant than than just like an eyebrow vent. Yeah, exactly. Right here you got um, a little bit of storage in the deck and then access into the hole as well. Oh, um, look at that. 
little bottle opener and another yeah. little pocket. Little pocket, yep. Oh, uh, the seat's pretty comfortable, Dad. Um, I still think the gravity seat that Feel Free puts out on their lures is the most comfortable seat, in my opinion, on a kayak. Mm -hmm. I, I just think so. Uh, this is a close runner up, you know. Uh, so far, I've, I've put together a couple of trips that are eight hours or more um, out on the kayak, and uh, my butt doesn't hurt and my back doesn't kill me. Do you feel, find yourself adjusting it while you're out there? Um, I find myself uh, tweaking it, minor, minor adjustments. Some of it's the like the back, you can adjust uh, how tight that is, you know, straight oh, up yeah. and back. You can recline it a little bit. Um, you can also, it has a lumbar adjustment thing. So it's got a couple different adjustments. And then over here, your height right there. And then in the back, you know, you can drop it down. Mm -hmm. um, I sit in the high position the majority of the time. Sure. Yeah. Um, maybe if you're offshore, but yeah. Yeah. If I was offshore. Better ergonomics um, to the pedals in that high position exactly. for sure. It's got some EVA padding right here for standing. I'm not going to stand in this kayak. No? I don't think so. What about maybe in summertime? If, maybe if I lose a little bit of weight, you know? Oh, I think you got it, Chris. So the biggest thing for me, being an old guy, having some knee injuries <laughs> and being a big dude, uh -huh. is the getting up and the getting back down. Uh -huh. Not um, as graceful as it once was. Since it's such a low starting point, yeah. you know, that's going to be the toughest part for me. But I probably can stand in it. I'm not saying that you can't. Uh, I think people like Dean Lim, my buddy, who's a ninja on his kayak, he'll have no problem standing in something like this. Yeah. A guy like me or my other buddy, Matt, uh, from Yankee Tinker Outdoors, we're bigger dudes. We're gonna have a little bit of an issue. Yeah. That's just being honest. Yeah, that's good. It's good to get real with folks because, uh, you know, a lot of people are buying this for bass fishing and inshore stuff. and. And demoing is is huge to know that that's going to work for you, you know. Yeah. Like and a I've, native titan or a blue sky. Yeah, you're going to stand right up. Exactly. But there's there's always a trade off, and for this boat, you get a lot more versatility inshore and offshore, a lot more speed. Exactly. But a little bit more work getting up and down. Yeah. So there there's there is that to to keep in mind. So I always take a dry bag with me, Dan. Um, I carry a lot of camera equipment, batteries. Um, I put a first aid kit. Um, uh, little tiny compressible rain poncho, my car keys, you know, all of that stuff goes in my dry bag, stuff that I can't get wet. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so that I just store behind the seat. I don't really worry about lashing it down uh, because they tend to float when you tip over. I have experience with that. <laughs> Yard sale. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, this is my crate system. A lot of guys in Hobies run the H crate. I haven't bought one yet. This is my homemade crate and it works just fine we'll call it a g crate this thing's og totally <laughs> this thing's got me by for years now so that's awesome i have like eight or four different kinds of tackle boxes i've got the lure lock box have you seen these yet no show me okay they're kind of interesting as one falls out <laughs> yeah well there's a coating on them that's supposed to lock them into place oh interesting um i'll get that one huh. later but that's pretty cool. Look at that. Yeah, that was really so, cool. So, anyways, that's interesting. I'm testing this out, and that's okay. kind of what this is about. Is right. Got to use them to test them. Right. And then I have the battle box from Calcos Fishing. Have you seen that one? Dude, that thing's legit. These are awesome. Calcos is doing some big things. They we, are. We this really is awesome. We are stoked to be partnered with those guys. So, this is all like... Look at that. All your weights. Yeah. That is cool. Hooks. I need to finish organizing that. You're and so it organized. Out. I'm jealous. Isn't that cool? Yeah, my black pack's a disaster. So, <laughs> all right, I might have to check that one out, man. Is it waterproof too? Um, yes, it has a gasket on it. Nice, cool. All right. So then, um, you got the gear track in the back as well, so you can adjust where your bungees are at. You can tie more stuff down. Um, you know, you could put a camera mount back here. Yeah, it'd be a good spot for the over, sho over, over the shoulder, the shoulder pole. Camera. Yeah, cool. Um, and I like how they seem really well attached to the boat. Like if you had something up here, it's not going to be giving yeah, you a ton of exactly. sway. A wide, um, if you had a wide cooler, you could put the cooler sideways as well. So yeah. tons of room in here for different right. That's smart. So even if it's like a kind of a, a narrower, faster kayak, yeah. it still has room to do the, the you big know, kayak stuff. huge stuff like a Pro Angler or a Titan. Right. That's great. So then here is where I mount my, you know, my wheels. Uh, the scupper cart and I don't like it mounted 
so let me just show you the other yeah, option. So for like the past 20 years, we've seen Hobies doing this. Right. And, and it works, but... It gets in the way though of like you're, you're trying to reach back behind you and put your rods in and you're like, oh, where's it at? Yeah. Finally you find it, you know? Um, it just gets in the way, I think. Yeah, so, it's way more practical. But out here, like, that's not going to get in anything. Way. Yeah. And the only time you need it is when you get to shore. So it just goes over and you latch it down with a bungee. That's smart. Smart, smart rigging. So that, I mean, that's it. I mean, we could get into a lot of detail about this kayak. Um, yeah. You know, you could mount your your river stick or whatever it's called. The uh, power pole, power river pole. stick. Yeah. Torquedo? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice sturdy handle on the back. I don't yeah, know. they borrowed a lot of the stuff from the Pro Angler. I really feel like they, uh, you know, they took a lot of the stuff that worked from the PA, a right. lot of the things that worked with the Outback, and they combined it to make this boat. And I feel like they set the gold standard in the industry for the one kayak that sort of, one pedal kayak that sort of does it all. Um, really smart rigging. And uh, yeah, we're, we're excited to be able to sell these guys through the Reading shop. I, I'm sure you guys know by now through the other videos, but. We have now uh, partnered up. We took over partnership with Headwaters Adventure Company in Reading, and we are now selling these boats. So we've been able to deliver them to guys like Chris that are down here in the Central Valley that are Headwaters customers that want to support our shop. Uh, so we're able to keep it in that Headwaters family. So, Chris, thanks so much, man. I know you're going out. I saw Matt Yankee Tanker just pull in. Yeah. You guys are headed to Maloney's? Yeah, we have one more thing we need to do. Oh, what's that? We need to put a Headwaters sticker on here. Oh, Somewhere. dude. Yeah, let's get okay. on it. We got to do that. the cleanest the spot of the kayak is going to be in a long time <laughs> yeah one thing i like about you chris is uh it's it's not a beauty pageant it's a tool for a job <laughs> yeah exactly right, let's get it on there right don't you think yeah i think so that way it, uh you can see it in your photos and whatnot yeah oh, all right it's good man All right, man. Well, thanks for rocking that. I appreciate you representing for the shot. Yeah, not a problem. So what's the plan for Maloney's today, guys? Catching fish. Yeah? Yeah. You going to be drop shotting? Yeah. That's finesse today. Cool. Well, you guys, have fun. And will I see it on your channel, too, over there, Matt? Of course. All right. That depends. If I don't catch anything, I'm not going to post it. <laughs> <laughs> it never happened. It'll just be a video of me being like, Chris sucks. We could have gone to Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, you guys, if you want to see more from these guys, go check out their channels. We got Out West with Chris, Yankee Tankers Outdoors in the house. And uh, Chris, thanks so much for uh, letting me walk through and, uh, yeah, and pick your fun. brain on the new kayak. It's always fun. All right, we'll see you guys on the next one. Until next time, this is Dan wishing you happy paddling. We're going to install this guy. It's a little keel protector. It'll stick right on the front and allow him to load and unload his boat. And this will kind of be a sacrificial piece that we replace every couple of months. Uh, but it'll keep his boat looking a lot nicer and a lot newer.